Hey you all, what's up mga ka ECQ? Last time, we are able to graph an elliptic paraboloid. In this video, we will learn how to sketch the graph of a cone. Again, I'm Jake Avila. Let's begin. In this exercise, we are tasked to graph the portion of a cone with equation z equals square root of 4x squared plus y squared. Here, we want the portion between the planes z equals 2 and z equals 6. First, notice that when we square both sides of this equation, we get z squared equals 4x squared plus y squared. Now, we observe that the given equation is just the upper part of this cone. So to sketch the portion that we want, we need to use the given planes z equals 2 and z equals 6 along with the other sufficient traces. So to get these traces, we choose an appropriate value to eliminate each term. So for the term 4x squared to be 0, we need to set x equals 0. So this gives us the plane x equal to 0 or the yz plane. Now, for the term y squared to be 0, we need to set y equals 0. So we have the plane y equal to 0 or the xz plane. Lastly, for the term z squared to be 0, we need to set z equals 0. So we get the plane z equal to 0 or the xy plane. Here, we start with the traces that are ellipses. So we start with the traces on the planes z equals 2 and z equals 6. So for the plane z equal to 2, we substitute this value on the given equation. So we get 4x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared or 4. Now, when we divide both sides of this equation by 4, we get x squared plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So we get an ellipse with center at the point 0, 0, 2. Now, looking at the denominators, since 16, since 4 is greater than 1, we have the vertices uh, correspond to a shift on the y variable. So we get the points 0, 0, plus minus square root of 4, 2. Or we have the points 0, plus minus 2, 2. Well, the other two remaining points are obtained in a similar fashion. So we get 0 plus minus square root of 1, 0, 2. Or the points plus minus 1, 0, 2. Next, we plot this four points on the 3D space. Here, we follow the usual orientation of the coordinate axis where the Z axis points upwards, the X axis points towards you, and the y-axis points to the right. So here, to get the uh, graph of the ellipse, we connect these four points as in the animation. Next, we now move on to the plane z equals 6. So substituting this value, we have 4x squared plus y squared equals 6 squared or 36. When we divide both sides of this equation by 36, we get 4x squared over 36 or x squared over 9 plus y squared over 36 equals 1. Again, this is an ellipse with center at the point 0, 0, 6. Looking at the denominators, since 36 is greater than 9, the vertices correspond to a shift on the y variable. So we have... 0, 0, plus minus square root of 36, 6. Or the points, 0, plus minus 6, 6. The other two points are 0, plus minus square root of 9, 0, 6. Or the points, plus minus 3, 0, 6. Now, when we plot these four points in the 3D space, we have the following. Here, again, the traces or the trace on the plane z equal to 2 is already drawn. So to get the ellipse, we connect this four points. So, so far, we now have the traces on the planes z equals 2 and z equals 6. And both of them are ellipses. Now, we move on to the other 
traces. We start with the trace on the xy plane or when z equals 0. However, since we want the portion between the planes z equals 2 and z equals 6 and 0 is not between 2 and 6, the trace on the xy plane is not needed. So moving on, for the trace on the yz plane, we set x equals 0. So that when we move z squared to the right hand side, we have y squared minus z squared equals 0. So factoring this as a difference of two squares, we have y minus z times y plus z equals 0. So that we get the equations y equals z and y equals negative z. Note that these two equations are lines in the yz plane. So to get the two points in order to graph the portion of these lines between the planes z equals 2 and z equals 6, we set z on these values. So when z equals to 2, we have on the line y equals z, we get y equals 2. So we get the point 0, 2, 2. And on the line y equals negative z, we get y equals negative 2. So we get the point 0, negative 2, 2. Similarly, when z equals 6, we obtain on the line y equals z, y equals 6. And on the line y equals negative z, y equals negative 6. So this gives us the points uh, 0 plus minus 6, 6. So plotting these points in the 3D space, we have the following. Again, here the two ellipses are already drawn. So to get the two lines, we connect the corresponding points. So for the, uh, for the line y equals z, we connect the point 0, 2, 2 and 0, 6, 6. And for the line y equals negative z, we connect the points 0, negative 2, 2 and the point 0, negative 6, 6. So here is now the trace on the yz planes. So we have two lines. Lastly, on the, on the xz plane, we set y equals 0. So when we move z squared to the right hand side, we have 4x squared minus z squared equals 0. So factoring this as a difference of two squares, we get 2x minus z times 2x plus z equals 0. And so we have 2x equals z or x equals z over 2 or 2x equals negative z or x equals negative z over 2. Again, both of these equations are lines in the xz plane. Again, we want the portion of these lines between the planes z equals 2 and z equals 6. So we evaluate z on these values. So for instance, when z equals 2, on the line x equals z over 2, we have 2 over 2 or 1. So we get the point 1, 0, 2. And on x equals negative z over 2, we have negative 2 over 2 or negative 1. So we get the point negative 1, 0, 2. Likewise, when z equals 6, we get on x equals z over 2, we have 6 over 2 or 3. And on x equals negative z over 2, we have negative 6 over 2 or negative 3. So we get the points plus minus 3, 0, 6. So when we plot these four points on 3D space, and when we connect the corresponding points, we get the two lines. So these are the traces now on the xz plane. So finally, when we label all the points and identified the portion of the traces that are inside and are covered by the cone and replace them from solid lines to broken lines, we obtain this final sketch. So here is the cone in the 3D space. So this concludes our discussion on exercise 3. In the next video, we will look at the graph of a hyperboloid of one sheet.